Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're very welcome to our celebration of Mass this beautiful morning. It's the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and welcome to those who are joining us uh, on the live stream. You're very welcome too, and thank you for your presence. Um, and it's lovely to, to have you, um, and you are encouragement to, to your fellow parishioners also who see that we're able to gather and celebrate together uh, safely and at, at the requisite distance and it encourages and inspires them to do likewise. So thank you. That we might uh, hear and heed the word of God which speaks to us about how God comes to us perhaps in ways that we do not always expect and in ways that perhaps are contrary to what we might have constructed the activity of God to be is their theme for our, for our scripture readings so that it might uh, educate us and encourage us, we pray, and that we might in due course receive the Eucharist uh, as food for our journey of discipleship. Worthily, we recognise our frailty and we ask pardon for our failures. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, have a care for justice, act with integrity, for soon my salvation will come and my integrity be manifest. Foreigners who have attached themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love his name and be his servants, all who observe the Sabbath not profaning it and cling to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their holocausts and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The psalm is, Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let, Let the, the peoples, peoples praise you, O God. God. Let, Let all, all the peoples, peoples praise, praise you. you. O God, be gracious and bless us and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, and all nations learn your saving help. Let, let your peoples, peoples praise you, O God. Let, let all, all the peoples, peoples praise, praise you. you. Let the nations be glad and exult, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness you rule the peoples, you guide the nations on earth. Let, let the peoples, peoples praise you, O God. Let, let all the peoples praise you. Praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us his blessing till the ends of the earth revere him. Let, Let the, the peoples, peoples praise, praise you, O God. Let, Let all, all the peoples, peoples praise, praise you. you. second reading is a reading from the first book of the Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he went into the cave and spent the night in it. Then he was told, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Then the Lord himself went by. There came a mighty wind, so strong it tore the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, 
but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there came the sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he would send the crowds away. After sending them away, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone, while the boat, by now far out on the lake, was battling with a heavy sea, for there was a headwind. In the fourth watch of the night, he went towards them, walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But at once Jesus called out to them, saying, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered, Lord, he said, If it is you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus across the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried, and he put out his hand at once to Jesus. And Jesus took him and held him. Man of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And as they got into the boat, the wind dropped. The men in the boat bowed down before him then and said, truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Probably we all have in our memories, in our lives, no matter how long or short they are, milestone moments that we look back on and we recognise that in doing something we were changed perhaps in our outlook or our attitude as well as in our ability. I'm thinking about learning to swim. I'm thinking about um, learning to ride a bike without stabilisers. No, well, maybe I should just have kept my on. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, learning to scuba dive. And I remember all of those things. And I remember how, how I felt when I succeeded in doing them, how elated I was, and how I, I felt I had really achieved something, and how it changed how I saw myself and how I lived my life. When we do things in a hostile environment on top of the water, uh, defying gravity as it were on the bike and under the water they can be very frightening there's that moment when first you begin to float and you panic and you sink again and the next time you're supported to float you remember the first time you do a wobbly without stabilizers and then you get your balance and you're all right again and the first time you're completely submerged in the water with some breathing apparatus, how a moment of panic ensues. And then, usually, with the calming presence of an instructor, or a parent, or a big brother, or sister, or a kind granny, or aunt or uncle, you get your confidence, and you walk away from the experience a changed person. I don't know what milestone moments you're thinking of, but I'm sure ones that are not my experience, but
but lively in yours might stand out in slightly different ways. I'm thinking about getting married or having a child. When you look back and you think of how nervous you were and how unable to embrace the task you felt and yet it was the calming, quiet encouragement of a spouse perhaps or of your best man or your bridesmaid that got you through those moments. The calming, quiet presence of your doctor or nurse or midwife. The ability to trust people is the ability that empowers us to make great strides and steps in our lives. And to have people in whom we can trust and in whom we can confide is indeed a powerful presence. I'm thinking about how changed Peter and the other apostles are by their experience today. But perhaps a moment to reflect on Elijah's experience is good too. The year is 860 BC. Ahab is the king who rules the land of Israel, the northern kingdom. And he is in turn ruled by his wife Jezebel. The eponymous Jezebel, the origin of the insult Jezebel. She was something of a Nimelda Marcus of her time, famed for her collection of shoes, but famed for her collection of other things as well. Ivory, lovers, and gold. Well, on one of her shopping trips away, Elijah sees 150 of the court prophets, the prophets of Baal, as the Old Testament calls them, a pagan god. And he challenges them to a competition before the king. He says, let's see whether it's the Lord God, the God of Israel, Isaac and Jacob, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the book of Genesis, who is God. Or is it this idol, this Baal? And the competition is one that Elijah stages in front of the king and his courtiers. He asks the province of Baal to go first and they butcher an ox, they place it on an altar of wood and they dance around it with their incantations and their forms of prayer, asking God to send fire to consume the offering. And they do so from dawn till dusk without success. As the sun sets, Elijah says, now my turn. And he pours 50 gallons of water over the altar and the ox and says briefly, Lord God, send fire. And fire comes and consumes the offering. And the terms of the competition were that the losers should be put to death as false prophets and purveyors of lies. So the 150 prophets of Baal are put to death and Jezebel returns to court to discover that that has happened. Sends word to Elijah that he will join them the following day when she has him executed. So he flees, he runs south and he goes to Mount Sinai where the people of Israel first encountered God. And he vaguely expected God to appear to him in the same way. Thunder, lightning, earthquake and mighty wind. But none of those are the presence of God but rather a still small voice. And the disciples on the lake, well, they think that the power manifest in the storm is so strong that God must be at work. But it's the quiet voice of Jesus calling to Peter to come to him out of the boat and across the water that reveals who Jesus really is. Sometimes more is achieved by the quiet word than by the grand gesture and God like us knows that well it's easy to pull the house down a lot more difficult to build it up again sometimes the ability to have the quiet conversation is helpful it doesn't always work of course but sometimes it does I wonder 
if the fact that God makes himself known to Elijah in a still small voice and makes his reassuring presence known to Peter with an invitation to come across the water to him when confusion and noise is all around but it's the quiet encouragement of the Lord that reveals him to Peter and becomes for Peter a pivotal moment in his life because he learns to trust and in trusting learns a deal of himself and of what he's called to. If God makes himself known in a still small voice, I wonder if we too can make God known in the same way. The gentleness of the still small voice that contains the presence of God is a powerful encouragement to us, perhaps, that we, with very little, can still achieve much, just as God does when he speaks in a still, small, reassuring voice that encourages others to confide and to trust. For that gift received by us and so given by us for each other and ourselves, we pray today. Let's stand to make known our needs and petitions before God. Grant that the Church may hear the call of her Lord and come to him in trust. May all Christian people keep their eyes fixed on him, knowing that they can do nothing without him, but in his power can do great things. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Correct those who, in the pride of authority, trust too much in their own strength. Give courage to the many in the world who are oppressed by fear of what seems to them strange or unknown. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. When our daily work is hard, when our relationships become difficult, teach us to know where we must look for help. May we see Christ in the life around us and recognise him when he comes in unfamiliar and unexpected ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on those who are battered by the strains of life and feel they are making no progress towards better things. Pardon and rescue all who have been drawn into forbidden occult ways and can no longer see their true God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks to the departed, called by Christ to come to him. May those who have crossed the stormy sea of life feel the touch of his hand and find rest. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. For the members of our parish community who are sick or housebound, also we pray, remembering in particular those who are housebound and praying for those who receive Holy Communion from Mass this morning. We remember our children, our young people who will return to school this week and we give thanks for those who have achieved much in their examinations despite very testing circumstances. We pray for ourselves the Lord will remind us that he speaks to us quietly and it's easy for us not to hear him when he does and reminds us that we can speak quietly of God to encourage others. And finally, we pray for our dead. We remember those who have died recently, especially uh, Thomas McKinnon and Nan McCallum and for those whose anniversaries occur about now. 
particularly those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you call us to be your people and you call to us in a still small voice. Help us to hear you and to be as you are for others. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, this holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept these offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world, source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of that Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joys of your kingdom. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as together with them, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who always love the human race and to walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed also your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. 
Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your own right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favour on this offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, with bishops, priests, deacons and your entire holy people we may walk your ways with faith and hope and strive to bring joy and trust to the world. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place to live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Conville and all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Christ Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Insofar as it's appropriate and proper for us to do so, we offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those present or joining us in the live stream who are not able to receive communion, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. And since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For the reception of Holy Communion, I'd invite you to remain standing in your place. I'll come to you with Holy Communion, which at the moment is only in the form of bread and only to be received in the hand. When I give you Communion, if you let me pass and then take your mask off, receive Communion and then make your prayers of thanksgiving. And may the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May communion in this holy sacrament which we have received save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next uh, gathering here is for a Mass on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. I have two funerals, uh, I'm afraid places are reserved for families uh, later in the week, uh, and uh, we'll have vigil Mass at 5.30 on Saturday, and Mass at 10 o'clock, 10.30 rather, on Sunday morning, as usual. Thank you for your presence. Um, our way of booking seems to be working reasonably efficiently, so places are at, on our uh, on our um, link from seven days to 24 hours before, then places by phone from 24 to two hours before, and in each case you will receive a confirmation email or telephone call. There was a slight hiccup through the week, not with us, but with Mr. Google. Uh, I don't know what it was, but some data has disappeared and then reappeared again. So I hope uh, everyone that wanted to come got to come. Um, if not, I apologise and I hope that we'll get better at this as it goes along, although for the first few weeks we seem to get on just fine. So thank you for being here, thank you for the encouragement it gives to me, to one another and to other members of the parish community. I hope you have a lovely day and a good week too. All our details and all our plans and all our schedules are available, of course not just in a bulletin that's at the porch on the way out and in the porch of the house, but also on our website and our Facebook. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.